On today's show, the LA Clippers get the job done against the Lakers for the first time this season. It was not pretty. Of course, no Vitsa Zubats, no LeBron James, but Kawhi Leonard was able to get his second career triple double to lead the Clippers to the win. Going to be talking about that and why I'm a little bit skeptical of our matchup against the Lakers going forward on today's Locked On Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day. Your team every day. I'm your host, Darren Viziri, born and raised in L.A. And in my 19th season as a Clipper fan, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, where I went live directly after the game to talk about it. And Locked On Clippers is free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, where I want you to let me know what you think of our matchup with the Lakers this season, because I think it's a little bit different. And I'm going to be talking about that in this episode, along with how the game went. But before we do that, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to place bets on anything, including the Clippers going all the way. So Clipper Nation, I was not at this game. I'm currently feeling kind of under the weather. I just don't sleep enough. But let me tell you something. It's all for the love of the team. Had coaching exploits. My team beat Sierra Canyon, by the way. I was so excited about that. I had a great day. I had a great day. My team beat Sierra Canyon. Clippers beat the Lakers. And Iran is my country, won in the Asian Cup. So it was a great day. But the Clippers, beating the Lakers for the first time this season, right? No LeBron, no Zoo. It wasn't a pretty win at all. I thought that we got crushed on the glass. At one point, it was 33-13 on the glass. The Clippers were down. It ended up actually being a somewhat respectable margin. At the end, it was 41-36 to in favor of the Lakers, but they crushed us on the offensive glass, 13-6, to and a lot of that was the lack of size. But I also think the Clippers, you know, we made life tough on ourselves in the third quarter with some really careless turnovers, and Paul George, yet again, as we've seen so often throughout his Clipper career, the bad, careless turnovers that are very timely that result in, you know, their live ball turnovers that are resulting in points for the Lakers, that changes momentum. It really does. But in the fourth quarter, and by the way, like, this game, the Clippers didn't get off to a great start. They ended the first quarter well, led by Russ and Norm. We're up six after one. Their best quarter was the second quarter, where James Harden really got going, had 20 points by halftime. Terrence Mann had a great game, but especially in the first half. And Kawhi was seven for seven at halftime, and we scored 77 points in the first half. Like, even with Anthony Davis playing at a high level and the first quarter, the Lakers doing a pretty decent job on the Clippers. Even though they scored 35 points, I think they actually made life a little bit tough. It was just Russell Westbrook hit a three with his shoe off and then got an and one in the last minute and gave us a six-point lead. It was like neck and neck the entire first quarter. And I'm thinking, there's no LeBron. I know there's no Zoo, but we got to blow these guys out. You know, I wanted a commanding win. And that wasn't what this was. And I think the Clipper defense has been really lacking of late. I think it, it's first transition defense. you got to do a better job getting back. Two, uh, if it's Zubats not being there is very obvious, especially against AD. For example, we had Mason Plumley guarding him to start the game. You know, Kawhi and Paul George split time on Reeves and Torian Prince. And then you had, like, James Harden guarding Torian Prince. D'Angelo Russell being guarded by Terrence. And I thought Terrence did a pretty good job when he was able to guard him. But there were two fouls in the first quarter on T against D'Lo who was getting a pretty nice whistle in this game, I might add. I do not think the whistle favored the Clippers at all in this one. You know, D'Lo had more free throws than anyone in the game. He only shot six free throws, but the Lakers shot 22, Clippers shot 12, and we had more points in the paint. It felt like we were getting to the paint more. Russ, he can't buy a call. Harden was getting some, you know, some, what's the word? 
He was unfortunate not to get some calls. But I do think Paul George and especially James Harden at times in the first half were trying too hard to get fouls, mainly James Harden, and then complaining and not getting back. I don't like that. And Paul George at the end of the second quarter, he didn't shoot the ball and almost turned it over because he was, you know, trying to save his field goal, his three point percentage. Like that, you're not tricking anyone, bro. Like, come on, dude. But I'll tell you one thing James Harden had a very solid game overall. Our bench was awesome. But the man that led the way, Kawhi Leonard. It was interesting because the first half was really a James Harden led half. He had the most shot attempts. He had the ball in his hands the most. Because remember what I said in the last episode when I was previewing the game? I said they're probably going to have some bigger guys guarding Kawhi and Paul George. Rui Hachimura in this case was on Kawhi. Solid size matchup. Then you had Torian Prince on PG. And then Vanderbilt, when he came in, he got a crack at everybody and he did a really good job. James Harden is being guarded by Reeves. And even though I thought, you know, Austin Reeves did a pretty good job on him to start the game the first couple of minutes, AD was in drop coverage, Reeves was getting physical, and I think he got away with some fouls. As the game went on, Harden started to get the better of him, started making some threes, and Austin, you know, kind of started getting hunted defensively as the game went on, and James was in his bag, but Kawhi was also, I wouldn't want to say fully in his bag in the first half, but he was just making his shots, you know, mid-range, elbow, knocking him down, and he hadn't missed. Then in the second half, he was still very efficient, and he got a triple-double, his second career triple-double. And it was interesting. You know, I've said at times with Westbrook and Harden, I didn't notice that they got, like, that many assists. And it was the same in this one with Kawhi. I didn't notice he had 10 assists. He definitely made some good passes, but came out of nowhere. 25 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists on 11 for 16 shooting. But you know what? I don't want to say it fully came out of nowhere because – Around late second quarter and then the whole second half damn near, they were doubling Kawhi a lot. And that was causing a lot of open shots for Clipper players. But also, you know, the Lakers did a, made an effort to run the Clippers off the three-point line in this game. We are the number one team in the league now in three-point percentage. We've surpassed the Thunder, and that's an absolutely great stat to have, right? Leading the league in three-point percentage. And I think it's because we're not super high volume. I think it's because we take the right ones. And in this game, the Lakers only allowed us to shoot 27 threes we made 14 of them by the way the starters had seven and the bench had seven so 52 percent from three 59 percent from the field the only uh shooting split i wasn't really too happy with was free throws we were nine for 12 but we shot really well even though i don't think we played that well but i think a lot of that's come from coming from Kawhi leonard being double teamed and you saw when they were attack you know closing out hard it allowed guys like Norman Powell to get downhill. But Kawhi, I thought he was very solid, both ends of the floor. I thought our defense, though, wasn't that great. Like, I thought Paul and Kawhi were pretty solid, but I don't think our defense was that great. Russ had some good moments. I thought Harden, besides one possession where he got two strips on, on the same possession, was terrible defensively. Very good offensively, but I thought he was awful defensively. He wasn't trying. It didn't look like. Like, he, there was one time he was guarding AD in the post, and I think that Harden is a good post defender, but AD spun on him super easily. There was no resistance, and he got blown by several times, some weak closeouts with no hand up. It's gone to the point now where I can see when Harden's effort is there defensively and when it's not. And for the most part with the Clippers, it has been, but I don't think he was good defensively in this game. Um, and the Clippers allowed 116 points to the Lakers, Without LeBron. And part of that, you know, one thing I talked about was D'Angelo Russell. He had to have a good game for them to compete, and he did. But he and Austin Reeves went a combined one for 10 in the fourth, which really helped the Clippers. And one thing we did that changed the game was we went small. You know, Mason and Daniel Tice, you know, I thought Mason had some good moments rim protecting at times, but he's not getting enough rebounds. It, like, they killed us on the glass, killed us. He only had two rebounds, and Daniel Tice only had two rebounds. So our centers have a combined four boards, and they don't necessarily help our offense too much. They're not the screen setters that Zoo is. We miss Zoo badly. So Ty went small with about nine minutes to go in the game. We were only up 108-106. Like they, the, the Lakers had really come back. D'Lo was making shots. AD was rebounding. Vanderbilt was disrupting things. Cam Reddish was 3-for-5 from the field and 2-for-4 from 3 in this game. So they got double-digit scoring from Rui Hachimura with 11 points, from Torian Prince with 11 points, and Vando with 12, and Reddish with 9. So those role players that have been super inconsistent for the Lakers, they were good in this game. But I think part of that is the Clippers weren't that sharp defensively, and I think Ty Lue said it best after the game. 
I'm paraphrasing, but he said like, took it for granted because LeBron wasn't playing. And when you're 0-2 against the team, it's not about just LeBron. It's about the Lakers, the team that, you know, your fan base has to deal with at work and school the next day when they lose and be in the minority, show some pride. And I think even though it's a win, and I've been the, you know, you guys listen to me. If you listen frequently, I always say a win is a win. You know, you just got to get the wins. But I want us to develop good habits as well. And we are winning. We're beating teams that are good. We're beating teams that are not so great. Maybe it's just because it's the Lakers and I was fired up and I wanted us to get a convincing win. But this was a little shaky. This was a little shaky. And that closing lineup, I think, it was a very weird closing lineup. But it worked. Kawhi, Paul, James, Norm, and Amir. Norm and Amir played the whole fourth. And I thought they were fantastic both. Norm, his ability to attack closeouts and that huge three he made to make it 113-108 was massive. He had nine points in the fourth. And Amir Coffey had a big three in the fourth. And we brought it home. And Kawhi was getting double teamed. We were targeting guys like Reeves and D'Lo in the pick and roll. They were double teaming. We were making the right play. Even AD got scored on in a little spin cycle by Kawhi. And then we were double teaming AD on the other end, making him pass. And as I said, D'Lo and Reeves went cold. And eventually their role players, you know, they didn't make very timely shots. So only one thing I want to add. Clippers win at 127-116, is that Paul George had a little scare, re-aggravating his groin. Apparently it happened in the last game. That same groin injury from before, of course. But he checked back in, he was fine, but apparently the Clippers are going to be managing it going forward. So, ugh, I'm just going to keep knocking on wood that it's nothing serious. The thing about groins are they're very tricky. As I've mentioned several times on this show, I've had a lingering groin injury for a couple of months now, and every time I play basketball full speed it gets worse so it's going to be an annoying thing hopefully it can you know he's got the best medical professionals out there in sports right now and so much personnel for that stuff so hopefully it's nothing too bad and doesn't linger for too long but something to watch something to consider going forward Kawhi Leonard triple double on 11 for 16 shooting only one three-point attempt so Paul George and Kawhi only shooting a combined three threes shows the Lakers made it a point of emphasis to kind of take those away Three for three from the line for Kawhi. He was my player of the game. But coming up, going to be talking about the other guys, the bench for the Clippers. Coming up. I got to tell you a little something about Hungry Root. Hungry Root is a perfect tool to help you eat healthier in the new year. It's here to show you and help you from short-lived resolutions by making planning your meals easy and healthy. Building healthy habits that won't disappear a couple months into the year, you can do all that with Hungry Root. Hungry Root makes it easier for everyone to eat healthy the way that they want to. They support all major diets and lifestyles around, whether you're vegetarian, vegan, you don't eat dairy, all of that stuff. And it allows you to save money. Many customers save money on groceries versus the store, as well as eating out less and avoiding expensive takeout and restaurants. Hungry Root's the easiest way to get fresh, high-quality food delivered right to you. Right now, Hungry Root is offering Locked On Clippers listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash LockedOn to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash LockedOn. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. I got to tell you a little something about eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right, Clippers. 
winning this one, 127 to 116. We are now 25 and 7 in our last 32. We are currently on a three game winning streak. We've also won six out of our last seven games, 18 of our last 20 with Kawhi, and 11 out of our last 13 period. We are still one of the hottest teams in the league, and don't let a slightly unconvincing performance against the Lakers trick you into thinking that this team is not for real. We are 28-14 and 14 on the season, which matches the 2014 Clippers, who had the best record in Clipper history, or ties them at that at this point of the season. They were 28 and 14 as well. The best thir- uh, 42 game mark for any Clipper team ever is the 2012 13 Clippers. We were 32 and 10 at this point, which is spectacular. But I have a feeling this Clipper team, I don't know if they will reach that. Obviously, I think it's a better team in terms of, you know, star power and just the chances of winning it all. But we'll see if we can reach that. I'm just taking it one game at a time. And let me tell you something I was not able to attend this game, as I said. But we continued our undefeated run without me at the games. 6-0 and this season. But overall, whether I've been there or not, we're a great home team this year. We're going out with a bang at the Staples Center in our last year. 19-4 and at home this year. Shout out 207. I could hear you loud and clear on TV, but I will say this. And by the way, that felt like less Laker fans on TV. I don't know what it was like at the games. If you were at the game, if you were there, let me know in the comments. But... That looked like less Laker fans than normal at a Clipper-Laker game. I didn't hear them very much either. I don't know if it was LeBron not playing or them being below 500. I don't know. But I could hear you, 207. The only thing is this: when the music plays super loud during our offensive possessions, it gets we get you know that, that section gets drowned out. But it's great to have a section that's making noise every possession, getting it going for the, for the uh, rest of the crowd. But let's talk about the Clippers bench in this game. Norman Powell and Russell Westbrook and the impact that they made. Russell Westbrook, he came in right away and started causing problems. And I think, and I mean problems for the Lakers. And I think Russ was a lot more in control this game. Remember the last time we played the Lakers? He was 100 miles per hour just trying so hard to stick it to him. Because, you know, he feels wrong by them. This game, he was a lot more patient. And even though he had some moments where he was going a little too fast, he had three turnovers, I thought he was excellent. You know, that that one shoe three that he made was unbelievable. Russell Westbrook shooting one shoe Russ, shooting 100% from three this season. And then he got that and one where he drove right into Cam Reddish's chest and he made him fly back like six feet. It was so funny. Russ is a comedy player to watch. Like he, in in the best way. He does some things where I'm just like, wow. But And you know what's funny about Russ in this game is he only played 18 minutes, and I thought he had a case to play more. You know, in the first half, he only had that one stint. And then in the second half, he played well too. He was super active, getting to the basket. His defense was pretty good. He had two steals, 16 points, six rebounds, three assists, and two steals in the game on 6-for-11 shooting. And three for three from deep. So you all know what I always say. Take those first two. He made both. So, of course, you're taking the third. And they were all wide open. And they were very timely as well. So, Russ, absolutely awesome. All smiles after the game in his post-game interview with Chris Haynes. And he only played a minute and a half in the fourth. And I thought he was just awesome. Like, that kind of production, 16 points, six rebounds, three assists, two steals on six for 11 shooting and 100% from three and one for one from the line in just 18 minutes of play, like, that's just crazy. Then Norman Powell, I mean, how many big shots did he hit? Those runners off the glass going to left, going to his left. 17 points, five rebounds, two assists, two blocks on eight for 14 shooting. And you know what's crazy? He actually didn't shoot that well from three. Only one for four from three and no free throws for Norm. But he shot seven for uh, for 10 from two. And speaking of seven for 10, Terrence Mann, that's what he shot in the game. But he was ex- excellent. You know, got us going in that first quarter when we weren't too great to start the game offensively, just like the Nets game. He had seven points in the first, if I recall correctly. Let me just double check on that. But Terrence shot seven for 10 in the game. Yeah, he had seven points in the first. Seven for 10 in the game on and, and two for four from three. I think he could have played more, but he did have those four fouls. Played 23 minutes overall. Right now, 
He's shooting 30% from three if you round up, 29.6. So it's coming, and after this game where he shot 50%, I think he'll be maybe in the 30 mark. And he's going to keep going up, guys. I'm letting, I told you. I told you about Terrence Mann. you got to believe in the boy, the man. And coming up, going to be talking a little bit more about the performance of Paul George and James Harden, but also why I don't like our matchup with the Lakers as much this season. I got to tell you a little something about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. The NFL regular season is over, and we are at the NFC and AFC championships. And there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet. Like betting for the Clippers to win the championship, the odds are only getting better. So you got to go as soon as possible. But you can have live same-game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab or make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, Clippers winning this one, 127-116. to 116. Fun fact, with this win, the Clippers have officially won the Hallway Series. Yeah, the Hallway Series. The Clippers have beaten the Lakers more times in the Staples Center era where they've shared a hallway than the Lakers have beaten them. And even if the Lakers win the next one, it doesn't matter. Wow. You know, that's not much of an achievement, right? Beating the Lakers more times in the Staples Center era. But when we went into that stadium, we were the worst franchise in NBA history. And they were two at worst. because They've won six more rings since then, since moving in. The fact that we won the majority of the games between the two teams in the stadium. The, we haven't played a playoff, game, a playoff game against each other, right? Yeah, the Lakers are the better franchise all time. But we got the better of them in this Staples Center era. We did. And I'm proud of that because I'm proud of how far we've come. That's crazy. I would Nobody would have ever guessed that. Nobody would have ever guessed that going into the Staples Center. So it's amazing. You know, I don't take these small things for granted. Let's talk about James Harden. You know, I thought he had more success in that second quarter. As I said, he had 20 points at the half. He ended with 23, but he had... 10 assists to only one turnover. So he was able to find guys for open shots, make good basketball plays. 23 points, 10 assists on 8 for 17 shooting and 4 for 8 from 3. Very efficient overall as well. The only weird one for James, 3 for 5 from the foul line, but he was getting on a heater in that second quarter. And I thought one thing that was very key for the Clippers in this game was taking advantage of the non-AD minutes. And I thought that in the first half, that's one of the things that we did well was taking advantage of those non-AD minutes. But let me just say this. I'm not a huge fan of our matchup with the Lakers this year. I know Zubats wasn't playing, and I'm not even just going off the fact that they're 2-1 and one against us this season. We used to have more size than them, and they had nobody to guard Kawhi and Paul. Now they have a bunch of big forwards that may not even be that skilled, but like having Rui, Torian Prince, Cam Reddish, Vando... LeBron and AD and Christian Wood. That's a lot of bodies to throw at Paul George and Kawhi. James Harden is the one that, you know, has to cook. But the thing is, if they have bodies to throw at Paul George and Kawhi, that makes me a little nervous. Am I saying I'm nervous about the Lakers in a playoff series? Not necessarily. Well, I would be nervous in the sense that Playing the Lakers would just be like a heart attack for me. Just a straight-up heart attack. Like, just if we lose that, I'm just, I am just I would have to, you know, book a one-way flight to Hawaii or something. Like, it would just be torture. You know, as like someone that's lived here my whole life. Like, we just, that that series, I can wait on that. I just, after seeing this matchup again tonight, I'm not a fan of it this season. I just think they crush us on the glass. And Zubats absolutely helps with that. But please don't twist my words and make it seem like I'm saying I think we'd lose to them in a series. I'm just saying that I don't love the matchup anymore like I used to. I used to think that they were, you know, we, we, you guys know we had no problem beating them. 
11 in a row. Now it's been hard. It's because they have more size, and we lost some of that size in the Harden trade. We gave, we became a better team. We got worse in the Laker matchup, if that makes sense. So that's the one thing the Lakers have over teams is size. If they can muck, I've noticed they try to make it really physical against us and force the refs to call stuff. And I don't think we'll get the better of a whistle in a series against the Lakers. I really don't. So like, even though Rui is not the best laterally, he's a, literally the same kind of build as Kawhi, maybe even a little bigger. So he was able to do a decent job of not letting Kawhi get by him, but Kawhi's shot making is just so great. Paul George, though, you know, four turnovers, 17 points, five rebounds, three assists. He was super efficient. He shot eight for 12 in the field. So, yeah, I'll take 66% all day, but just one for two from three. And that's because the Lakers didn't made an effort to stay home on him and make sure the Clippers didn't get as many open threes as they normally get. One for two from three in the game for P. No free throw attempts, which I hate. But it was enough to get the job done at the end. Mason Plumlee had zero points, played 19 minutes. Daniel Tice had three points and played 21 minutes and was one for three. But Amir Coffey, I didn't mention his stat line yet, but nine points, two rebounds on three for four shooting. And he was also three for three from deep. So huge performance by the Brewmaster. I'll take it. I hope Paul George is okay. I hope we'll see him in the next game because we need him. We need everybody. Paul George has played 40 games already this season. 40 out of 42. Kawhi Leonard has played 38 out of 42. James Harden has played 37 out of 42. And Russ has played all 42. And I am still knocking. I am still knocking. Our next game is in two, three days. No, Wednesday off, Thursday off, Friday against the Raptors in Toronto. That should be a win, but they've been playing better lately since they got R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel quickly. But let's see us get it done. Let's see us get it done. Kawhi Leonard triple-double. James Harden had a much better game than he did against the Lakers last time. And Russ and Norm were just phenomenal. Let me see if there's anything else I missed. AD was in drop coverage in the game for the most part. I don't know if I mentioned that. They started switching. When D Daniel Tice was in the game, they started switching because they know Tice won't post up. So they were fine switching like AD onto Kawhi and stuff. But a uh, Kawhi got the better of him once or twice. I thought that steal that Kawhi had, um, that, and he ended up feeding it to Paul George, was really huge. But yeah, that was basically it. Third quarter was rough because D'Lo and AD got going. But we turned the ball over too much. But yeah, Clippers win it 127 to 116. I'll take it. Let me know what you thought of the episode, guys. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. Subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more LA sports and LA Clipper content. And Locked on Clippers is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Let me know what you think of what I said about the matchup thing. Um, am I overreacting? Again, I'm not saying we'd lose them in a series, but it's not what it used to be in the last couple of years where I'm very confident we'd smoke them. And, of course, the home games, that's another thing. You know, it would be a 50-50 split in fans for our home games. I don't like that either. I want a whole Clipper crowd. So, I can wait to the Intuit Dome for the Clippers-Lakers thing. I think we're a much better team than them, but matchups do matter. Let me know what you think. We got the win. That's all that matters. And the age-old proverb continues. Go Clippers.